Welcome once again to Benji's Season 2 Battle Guide, a long overdue revision of a 3am rushed video that was viewed a decent amount back in Season 1. Firstly, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support from my recent Season 2 video. I really do appreciate it a lot and feel as if it would be an injustice not to continue throwing out a video here and there. So then, a brief introduction of what this mini-series is all about. My vision is to create a playlist that focuses on certain aspects of melee combat and just combat in general, oftentimes going into greater detail rather than just brushing over things. There are plenty of great melee guides out there, however I feel that the bulk format just doesn't hit right. I'm hoping that with shorter, more focused videos, they will be both easier to share and watch based on what you wish to learn and how far you want to improve. As before, some things will be opinionated, but I will try my best to cover many playstyles whether I like them or not, and also heavily take suggestions based on comments and so on. For now, I will be covering the bare basics, as if you are just loading up the game and have no history with melee slashes. As videos go on, they will focus on more advanced concepts, some of which you may not even know even while having thousands of hours in the game. So what is melee combat in Last Oasis? In Last Oasis, you have three potential attack directions, up, left, and right. This differs from the most comparable game, Mountain Blade, which the developers have a history of modding in, which has an additional down block direction. Due to this, melee combat is considerably easier, and I would argue that Last Oasis is one of the easiest and fastest slashes to get into, also making it a great starting point for the genre as a whole. Before you even start swinging your beat stick around, head into the options and look for the following settings. First of all, turn off show attack direction. Although it may seem useful at first, learning swing animations is vital. As soon as people start fainting, you will not be able to rely on the indicators. On this point, melee will boil down heavily to muscle memory. Never forget that most guys that are beating you have consistently put in many hours to the point where blocking and certain feints are second nature, so they have more time to think about other forms of counterplay. This brings me on to the most important tip, practice is everything. The longer you put into melee, the better you will get, plain and simple. Tips and tricks will only speed up this and offer counterplay at higher skill ceilings. You should also decide whether you want to use fluid or non-fluid blocking. Personally, I use non-fluid blocking as it is most similar to Mountain Blade. However, newer players may in fact find it easier to use fluid and I know many great PvPers that use fluid blocking. Without fluid blocking, you will have to tap right click every time you want to change your attack direction. And with fluid blocking, you can move your mouse around and it will block in a circular pattern. If you do choose to use fluid blocking, Keep in mind that you can hold both mouse buttons to lock your block direction and moving around your camera will not affect it. On the topic of camera movement, always aim to keep your opponent at the centre of your screen so that you can adequately read his attacks and have the best chance to block. Also use minimal inputs when swinging, again for the same reasons. Your goal should be to have as little camera movement as possible, so please don't be like this guy. The angle of your swing and camera also heavily comes into play during fights. You will see that if I am looking to the side, my swing will land too early and I will soft spot my opponent, which means I am hitting him too early into my swing and doing little to no damage. Also take time to find a sweet spot for your camera zoom. Once again this is a personal preference, as are most things with melee, but generally a further camera point will yield more FOV, and a closer camera will allow you to focus more on your enemy and get a feel for fainting and tracking range. Imagine your swing arc with red at the start, green in the middle and red at the end of your swing. You want to be hitting with the start or middle of your swing for both speed and maximum damage. Moving into your opponent will also increase your damage multiplier. Any forwards momentum you have during your swing will increase this multiplier and therefore increase your damage, meaning that sprinting into people or flying out of the sky will deal large amounts. In the same vein, moving away as you hit your opponent will decrease the amount of damage that you deal. When attacking, you can choose to tap or hold your attack. 
If you tap your attack, you will essentially get a light swing. And if you hold until there is a little glint on your weapon, you will get a heavy swing or a charged attack. This introduces the idea of a hit priority. Normally in a fight, you will experience a back and forth where you will attack, block, attack, block, and so on. There are a few ways to break this endless cycle. One simple way is to use footwork and outrange your opponent and then retaliate with your own swing. You could also just disengage and completely reset the priority. The second way you can change priority would be through chambering, which is performed when you attack instead of blocking at a correct time window, resulting in you both blocking and responding with your own swing in a singular motion. For now, do not worry about this or fancy fainting too much as it will be covered in later videos. The final way to break priority is through heavy attacks. Normally, if your opponent blocks your attack and swings straight after, you are required to block this attack otherwise you will be hit. However, when you hit someone with a heavy attack, they are staggered for a short amount of time. Long enough that if you use an instant second swing from your end and hit them before their swing hits you. Using the same logic, if you block a heavy attack, do not swing and instead be ready to block your opponent's follow-up attack. The idea of a hit priority is the first or second most important thing new players must learn to avoid a being abused in fights. The other most important thing is the emphasis on blocking. Block skill is hands down the most important thing when it comes to melee. If you can block every attack, you will never be hit. Simple, right? Most fights boil down to who slips up first. If you're patient enough and can block longer than the enemy, you win. But obviously this changes based on organic PvP and group fighting where you want to do fancier stuff to kill your opponent quicker. Currently in the game there is no counter to blocking using melee weapons. Other melee games like Mountain Blade or Mordhau have kicks that are actually relevant along with more useful chambering mechanics. And For Honor has guard breaking. Hello has nothing of the sort, meaning that you are pretty much untouchable if you quote, just block everything, forehead. As mentioned, kick is useless and you should not try to do any fancy feints or spinning, as well as chambering until you are confident in your blocking ability and range. As previously mentioned, we will make many more smaller videos going into detail on these topics. If there is anything you wish to learn about or do not know how to reproduce or counter, slap it in the comments and I will try to get around to it as best I can. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to use the trade stations to train with randoms and your friends and I may see you around if you are playing on EU. You can also catch me on my Twitch and be sure to watch out for the following Melee Guide videos. As always, have a good one and I will see you in a bit.